Hello, Juan. Uh, how you doing in Denver? I, I don't think I've seen you since we were at Bardo uh, having cocktails after a sneak preview of Senor Bear. How long ago was that? That hey, I know, right? It was a few years back. Senor Bear is three years old now, I think. So it's been a while. Up in the uh, up in the office in the Segreto room. That yeah. was a good time. That little yeah. that little back secret room. It's a cool place. Yeah. But well, we're grinding away, you know, we're, we're navigating these rough waters and, and uh, you know, we're just, I think our focus has, has been, you know, how do we, how do we take care of our people and how do we take care of our community? And, and then, you know, some of it is a little bit of blind faith in our, in our uh, politicians to, you know, make good decisions and, uh, you know, some have done a good job and some maybe not so good. And, and uh, you know, so we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. We just really don't know right now. And you guys are reopening soon. Is that right? In Colorado? That's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, we'll get the announcement from the mayor. I, be, I mean, from the governor, I believe tomorrow. Um, so, and, and, you know, there's a lot of rumors out there. I've heard of anywhere from May 27th to June 17th, but somewhere in there, I think probably. Well, May 27th wouldn't really be enough time to like get going with it. Um, I mean, pr probably uh, not all our concepts could open. Uh, that quickly, but um, but the Tappenbergers I think are pretty well set up to do that, and um, at least you know. So I can't speak for other other businesses, but I know a lot of a lot of restaurateurs have been doing a lot of prep work, uh, you know, sort of leading up to this, and you know, taking whatever information that they can get, and and um, trying to set themselves up for for success. Because the quicker you get open, uh, the quicker you can, uh, you know, the longer you can continue to leverage the government funding that you got if you got the PPP, for example, or you know, uh, or some other, you know, debt vehicle, so. Right, now, let's go over what restaurants you operate now. You've got, well, you, you do it. I would, I'd rattle them off, but I'll forget some, so. Sure, yeah, we have, uh, so Tap and Burger, and there's three of those, uh, Highland, Sloan's Lake, and DTC, which is at the Bellevue Station. Uh, we have Marin, which is in the old Wazi Supper Club uh, space downtown, which is our modern French restaurant. We have Senor Bear and Mr. Rosso, um, which are part of the same family. Um, th th those are our Latin concepts. Uh, we have Bardo and Sophia. Uh, so Bardo is in Denver and Sophia is in New Orleans. And uh, those are part of the same family as well, uh, sort of uh, vegetable forward Italian. And uh, we have Ashkara, uh, which is our Israeli uh, restaurant, which is a partnership with um, uh, the guys from River and Woods and Tributary and Tiaco and, and, and that. So. I didn't know Ashkara was yours. I ate there a year ago, January, I guess, when I was in town. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's a super fun con. We actually have a second one of those uh, opening in Boulder. Um, so we'll be opening in the old wild catch space up there. So that's right in between Salt Bistro and the, and the kitchen. That makes sense because the chef has spent a lot of time in Boulder, right? Yeah, Daniel works out of, um, you know, River and Woods up there, so. Daniel Asher, right? Yeah. Okay, so now everybody knows where you, what restaurants you operate, and so you're going to open some of them as soon as you can, is that, is that right? Yeah, um, so, you know, we're doing curbside, uh, you know, takeout delivery um, in most of the restaurants right now. Uh, Marin, we're doing strictly our nonprofit work, uh, so, you know, we're out, fe you know, uh, uh, feeding homeless shelters, battered women's shelters, frontline workers, industry kids who, um, you know, weren't able to get unemployment, which, you know, we're a sanctuary city, so we have some of those. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that we're doing, we're part of a group with uh, Adam Schlegel from Snooze and Alex Seidel and, and uh, Jen Jasinski, and we're doing about 25,000 meals a week um, there. Uh, so Marin's Kitchen is pretty much bogged down with that. And then uh, we just opened Mr. Rosso last week. Uh, all the other restaurants have been open doing it. Uh, the, um, you know, third party delivery and, and, and pick up and, and stuff like that, so. And how is business? I mean, can you make ends meet without a dining room? You know, it, it, we have assistance from the, we got, we got a PPP loan. So we have assistance from, uh, from the Fed right now. Um, so that's been allowing us to do that. Um, that's been super helpful. Um, we, uh, we do, uh, we st you know, week one when all this happened, we went from, you know, 400,000 plus dollars a week in sales as a group to 27,000. Uh, we built it back up 
Um, and uh, we actually launched a concept, I didn't even mention that, called Jabroni and Sons, uh, because once we got the PPP funding, we had money and we had to bring people back, but we only had X amount of work. So what we did was we kind of shifted, uh, you, know, you know, some of our team towards innovation and doing you know, new stuff. So that's an Italian sandwich shop that we opened uh, originally as a pop-up in Bordeaux, but it's, it's been wildly, um, it's been wildly successful. Um, and uh, so, uh, and then, uh, so uh, I think last week we did 156,000 in sales. So we've, we've really built up. Yeah, that's, that's much better than 27,000. That's a lot better than 27. Uh, so then I'm sure you've been doing a lot of math, figuring out whether it's worth opening a dining room when you have limited capacity and social distancing and all of that, but you have, you have to have more staff to run it. So is it, is that a possible <laughs> thing that, that you can do? Yeah. I mean, you can, you know, I think in Colorado, we're blessed with really nice weather, especially this time of year, you know, right through the fall. So, um, you know, we're going to, um, I know the city and state's working really hard to uh, allow restaurants to leverage some of the outdoors. Um, you know, as with anything else with politics, you know, it gets, there's a lot of uh, debate that goes on and there's a lot of other factors uh, beyond just the business, right? There's residents in, for, in neighborhoods and, um, you know, there's zoning issues and, and, and things like that. And, uh, and you have all the different departments within the uh, the city government that, you know, are fighting for tax revenue as well, the state, so they don't have to lay their people off. So uh, there's a lot of politics going on. So right now what they're saying is that you can, you, you can get up to, up to 120% of your capacity, uh, your fire code, excuse me, um, by uh, modifying your premise and being able to put tables outside. So that should be somewhat helpful. Um, they are putting quite a few restrictions on that. And, uh, and if, you know, they kind of circulated a document the other day that we all read over and, and those restrictions were way too much. So, um, you know, so, uh, you know, people are just kind of waiting patiently and, and they're listening. Um, I think they're, like I said, it's an unenviable position to be in if you're uh, the mayor of Denver or the governor of Colorado right now. And, uh, you know, we're trying to support them as best we can, but, you know, we need them to support us as well. Well, it has to be a difficult balance because obviously you want everybody to be safe, but you also have rent to pay and employees to look after and all of that. Yeah. And the minute you open, you know, your bills come due. So, um, you know, so regardless of what your capacity is, you know, the banks don't really give it, give, give, you know, they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, your landlords, uh, some of them care and some of them don't, you know, um, you know, we've, uh, ironically, uh, you know, half of our, we own a couple of buildings, half of our landlords come from, are in the Mexican community and they've been incredibly supportive. Uh, the other half of our landlords are, uh, you know, big development companies and they could give a shit. That's, um, that's a bummer. Oh, the second part, the, the, the bummer. It's been good is, is, is great. And yeah. I, you all managed to, to work through this and, and I mean, are there things that you've learned during all of this operationally or in terms of like yeah your efficiency efficiencies have gotten a lot better um you know streamlining menus i think is a priority um you know i think a lot of times we get very creative and we take our eye off the ball and you know you're a burger joint and all of a sudden you got spaghetti and meatballs and all this other stuff on your on your you know steaks and all this stuff on your menu where you know, I think getting getting back to the core of who you are and being known for certain things and being really good at them, um, you know, I think that's been uh, a good reminder uh, for us. Uh, we've seen uh, some of our staff, um, you know, have performed very well uh, under really unusual circumstances, and I'm super proud of them. Uh, so you learn a lot about a lot of your people. Um, and, you know, you learn a lot about your community and, you know, we've seen both sides. Uh, we've seen um, restaurants uh, take leadership roles in their community, which I think is really important. And being of Latino descent, my dad was Puerto Rican. Um, you know, I understand the importance of restaurants to communities um, beyond just being an entertainment vehicle. And, uh, and I think that there's been restaurateurs that really haven't, um, you know, embraced that, uh, that role. And, uh, and, and no criticism, it's just not who they are. And, uh, but it's been really uplifting to see the restaurants that have taken care of their folks. And, um, you know, Denver's got an unusual situation that it's a sanctuary city. We have undocumented workers uh, that don't uh, get federal funding. 
you know, can't apply for unemployment. They can't, um, you know, they, they couldn't use PPP funds on them. And, um, and, and seeing uh, some of the restaurateurs uh, uh, take that very seriously and, and uh, put humanity and morality ahead of legality, I think uh, is super inspiring to me. So those have been good things. Well, great. Uh, Juan Pardo, I wish you continued success and uh, hope you get through all of this stronger. I appreciate you. Thanks for taking the time. It means a lot. And, uh, you know, the support from the media has been great.